Welcome to my new Seattle home. You know, I uh, I did all my other uh, cooking videos at a friend's house because he had a really cool kitchen, and I had a really crappy kitchen. But now, oh my God, look, I've got an island, I've got counter space, I've got a pantry. In fact, I don't have a pantry, I have a sound booth. Check this out. This is where when you hear all the videos this year, thanks to the pandemic, I'm no longer in studio. Check it out. This, I'm actually in a closet, coffin. Ah! Anyway, okay, so I became obsessed with this new breakfast I wanna share with everybody. It starts with my, what's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty angle, um, with my prebiotic mix and all my research trying to find out what is best for our good gut bugs to feed them because that's impacts through all our organ systems. Got lots of videos on that. Let me just cut straight on the cooking. We have oat groats, right? These are, uh, these are still cut oats that haven't been cut. So uncut oats, oat groats, and we have barley groats. And you see these are actually purple um, uh, barley groats, purple or black barley. A little more expensive, like six bucks a pound, so three bucks a pound. I splurge and go for it. Then we have rye berries, also known as rye groats. And then, so this is like the original brole I talked about in How Not to Diet. Brole stands for barley, rye, oats, and then lentils. I get the lentils um, elsewhere. Um, but uh, if you want to make a gluten-free, um, then you can go oats uh, and sorghum and millet. Say, wait a second, that doesn't look like millet. Millet is not actually a thing. Millet is a catch-all term for any small grain, so there's like dozens of types of millets. Um, what we typically think of millet is pearl millet. But this is something called finger millet. I've got a bunch of videos coming up, both on sorghum and on millets. There's barnyard millet, foxtail millet, kodo millet, all sorts of great millets. And they all have, they're all from different plants and they all have different nutrients and clinical effects. Anyway, uh, the, the millet's expensive. Millet's, millet's like eight bucks. So. I think they're uh, picking up the garbage here. Okay, um, so I just did like a unimaginative one to one to one to one ratio. Okay, so we shake it out, just shake it out, just shake, shake, shake it out, and then pressure cook. Go over here. Um, oh, first I have to clean out my. I've been air frying some tempeh. It's basically two to one water to. Um, prebiotic mix. So we're gonna do, um, I batch cook, I don't know, let's make a cup, um, two cups of water. And uh, I, uh, my, uh, the pump that just automatically does, um, uh, when I put uh, pressure cook on, I starts at 30, so I just do 30. Maybe there's some better term. Anyway, okay, let's do some lentils. Um, uh, my, the house actually came with an extra pressure cooker, so now I got two, so I can make them at the same time. Uh, lentils. All right, these are the black beluga lentils. See how teeny they are? And so the, uh, the surface area to volume ratio is high, and most of the nutrients are constantly in the peel. Oh, let me, I'm gonna do like half a cup. Half a cup lentils to like a cup of water. I think in the book I actually talked about making the lentils with the uh, um, with the groats, but then they get too mushy, so I like them separately. All right, um, and uh, really just like steam for one minute, um, uh, high pressure steam in one minute, and then just let it naturally um, uh, naturally pressure release, and then we'll mix it all together and we will. Um, put all the yummy ingredients in. I was gonna wait for the uh, for the groats to get done, but I realized, of course, I have groats in my fridge because, of course, I always have groats in my fridge. So, ready for sneak peek at Dr. Gregor's refrigerator. Um, this is, uh, let's see what we have in here. Um, way too much hot sauce. Kale, kale, beans, groats, turmeric, lots of fruit, lots of greens, lots of sweet potatoes. Uh, okay. And then, oh, some hot peppers in the back there. Really nice. Some miso, some tahini. And of course, lots of fruit, uh, tortillas, lots of greens, you know, typical. Okay, this is actually what it looks like. It's not very pretty. This is what it looks like when it's, uh, when it's made. Although, yeah, 
Oh, I didn't have any, I ran out of sorghum, so there's sorghum this, but you won't be able to tell. So, I don't know, I get a scoop. Let me see how much is this. About this much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when it's cold, I actually warm it up a little bit. So, I'm going to nuke it for 30 seconds. All right, microwave 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, but, uh, or you can use it hot and steamy out of the, uh, the pressure cooker when you can. Okay, pomegranate time. Um, you cut, uh, I don't know, uh, along the equator. Just cut through the outer peel here. Just kind of twist it open. Look at the gorgeous little ruby red gems. All right, and then, are you ready to whack your pomegranate? Big heavy uh, spoon. I need the square. As you can see, there's just a flood of little pomegranate arrows going through. Probably can't hear me because I'm whacking the pomegranate. So you can see it does a pretty good job. Whack a little along the side. Don't hurt your fingers. Uh, pretty good. Okay. You want to cut off this little end here so little pieces don't get in your stuff. Take that pomegranate. Ta da! This sometimes will be little um, white bits here. Um, you can throw those away depending on how much. Um, there's just a little bitter. Oh, it looks like a blood splatter. All right. Okay, up. Oh, then you wash your hands off so you don't get. Oh, yeah, and don't do this with a dress shirt on. Ha! Okay. Put in some cocoa. This is Giardelli's Sunrise Cocoa. Um, uh, it's my favorite in the whole wide world. It's, it's, you can see it's super dark, super dutched to heck, which removes a lot of the nutrients, but oh, it tastes so good. Okay, I'm going to put about a tablespoon in, and that's, um, flax seeds and pumpkin seeds. Got to add some walnuts. And then, um, chocolate vinegar, dark chocolate balsamic vinegar. Oh, yeah. Now, um, to moisten it up, if you really want to be indulgent, you can use an unsweetened um, yogurt. I haven't been able to find a good unsweetened soy yogurt, but there's a cashew and, uh, and an almond on the market. Or just use some unsweetened soy milk, is what I'm going to do. Um, and then, ta-da, that's it. Let's uh, mix it up. This is what it looks like. It doesn't look very exciting. Um, but the yogurt gives us a nice chocolate pudding kind of thing. And this is more just kind of like a... All right. And then what's missing? Dark green leafy vegetables. Mint. Unfortunately, I don't have mint. I'm cheating. I have some lemon balm here. I have no idea if that's going to taste any good. But it's from the mint family. And so let's put that on. Make it look pretty. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. Ta-da! That's what it looks like. It looks kind of like a murder scene. Thing. But all right. Well, it's creamy chocolate, and then you get these little stabs of, um, of sweetness from the pomegranate. Oh my God, I forgot a key ingredient. I forgot the cranberries. It's in the title. And that's because I can't find cranberries anymore. I was all excited during the holiday season. Cranberries all the time. I can't even find frozen cranberries. Darn it. Anyway, so normally what I do is put a handful of fresh cranberries in um, or a handful of frozen, which you can put with the cold groats that you have stored up for the week, um, uh, and just when you microwave it, it'll defrost enough. So anyway, so then you get not only these bursts of sweet pomegranate, but then you get this like sour tart cranberry thing. It's awesome, trust me. And hopefully I can find cranberry soon. Oh my God, I love this so much. Um, if you want, ah, oh, I should bring my cookbook out. Hold on one second. And if you want more on um, recipes, we have a new recipe page on Nutrition Facts Store, and of course, my How Not to Die cookbook, check it out at your local library, or if you buy it, know that all the proceeds from all the sales of all my books, including this one, is all donated to charity.